It is time now for Night Court. Our legal eagles are here to break down the migrants' case against the Trump administration. Criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor David Bruno, and former criminal defense attorney Emily Campagno, and they are kind enough to take the sides we assign them, regardless of how they may personally feel about this case. Um, but let's start with this. Emily, we have this case. It looks like six adults who say they're Honduran citizens who are traveling, six children that they are also suing on behalf of, and they are claiming uh, their due process, viola due process violations under the Fifth Amendment, saying, this, the due process clause of the Fifth Amendment applies to all, quote, persons on United States soil and thus applies to plaintiffs when seeking admission at the southern United States border. Clearly, they're not on U.S. soil yet, but they say they're going to get here, and that's when these rights kick in. You're right. That's part of the multiple issues with this lawsuit that render it um, just absolutely ridiculous, frankly. One of them is standing. Now, the lawsuit or the, the case that the lawsuit points to out of the Supreme Court specifically references deportation proceedings, that the Fifth Amendment will be construed to afford all aliens participating in deportation proceedings due process. And that's partly the fallacy here is the fact that, as you pointed out, they're not yet on our border. They do not have that standing under the proceedings. And legally, it is not the same thing as an asylum applicant, secondly. And then the second large issue is the, um, it's the ripeness of the case, the timeliness. The president's comments, the lawsuit points to it. It hasn't resulted yet in an executive order, although with the military decision, that falls squarely under the exception of the Posse Comitatus Act, which is that active duty military can provide support mm -hmm. roles at the border as long as it's not law enforcement. Yeah. The third issue here is overreach, frankly. The courts, the courts accord great deference to the president in his exercising of power, as does Congress, which provides to him the authority to prevent classes of aliens, including all classes of aliens, from entering or crossing the border in, in for, um, for uh, facially positive reasons mm -hmm. and taking it a step further that they're not allowed essentially to go behind the scenes, the courts well, are, to determine whether or not it's legal. So here, right. there, there's just multiple issues. Yeah, let me bring in David on the first one there, or, or first or second one about both standing but about ripeness too. I mean, the president says this executive order, this executive action is coming. Should they wait then until that uh, they actually have something to challenge, David? I mean, you know, are they getting the cart ahead of the horse at this point? I do. I do believe. I do believe it's premature to file this action. Number one, they are not at the port of entry. And number two, the president has not taken official action. I think whoever brought this lawsuit failed to read the actual United States Supreme Court decision in Trump versus Hawaii, which granted him a tremendous amount of discretion to act this way. But it does bring up some issues. It does bring up some issues. There, are, there is a procedure there uh, for any asylum seekers that everyone should be taken in for a credible fear interview. And then thereafter, if they're granted that, then there is a hearing. You know, interesting enough, I read some statistics, U.S. Today printed out that 93% of the 401 asylum seekers in the March caravan, the April caravan, were actually cleared through the first uh, interview. That was very surprising to me. I couldn't believe it because I, I, I thought that there were many people taking advantage of the situation. Mm -hmm. But here, I mean, it does raise some issues. There is a process under our federal code. And if, if there's no executive action and they're denied those rights, they will have claims uh, for due process mm -hmm. violations. Well, and one of the things that they're really objecting to in this uh, lawsuit is this idea that people caught at the border are not going to be allowed to proceed into the country. They're going to be held in temporary dwellings. Here's what the president said about the plan. We're going to build tent cities. We're going to put tents up all over the place. We're not going to build structures and spend all of this, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. We're going to have tents. They're going to be very nice, and they're going to wait. And if they don't get asylum, they get out. Uh, in the complaint, not so sure they think that the tents are going to be nice. They say there's no evidence that Trump's policy, position, initiative of placing people in tents in tent cities is in compliance with the requirements that alien children, such as those at issue in this case, are being placed in facilities run by licensed programs that provide adequate temperature control and ventilation, access drink to drinking water, and supervision as required by the Flores Agreement. Uh, I want you both quickly to weigh in on that issue. Emily, to you first. 
Absolutely. Um, I think the biggest issue here, again, is the ripeness. Now, what the president says is an interview, it does not translate to an executive order, an actual decision. So while the points made there are absolutely true, a tent city would have to comply with a Flores agreement. The fact of the matter is that he hasn't issued or created that yet, and thus it's just, it's simply not timely. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it's also important to note that in the lawsuit, a lot of the grievances that it talks about is both rhetoric and also things that it is incumbent upon Congress to change. So to me, it would behoove these attorneys to spend their time more lobbying our representatives mm -hmm. in Congress rather than clogging the courts with this lawsuit. Dave, does it stand up against that first uh, hurdle there at the district court where it's been filed? Well, with the language that you've extracted there, the key term is children. Mm -hmm. So yes, you cannot put the children in the tents pursuant to the Flores agreement. There are mandatory requirements in that agreement and a tent will not, will not be sufficient. All right. Well, for the, children. The, for yeah, children. The, the, that's very specific in that Flores agreement and uh, yeah. decree. And the DOD says that's not part of what they're going to be doing. They are not setting up tent cities. So we'll see what the reality is as this plays out. Um, David and Emily, thank you very much.